Hello everyone. Things and places abandoned by humans have a special charm to them. Most people, at least once in a lifetime, would like to enter a house where no one's lived for a long time, or take a walk in an abandoned amusement park. Wait, time out, time out, time out! It's creepy, of course, like a horror movie, but it's very interesting. That's why today we offer you to visit Graveyards of Forgotten Objects. Let's get it on. New Cars Can new cars end up abandoned? After all, they are new. Many people dream of having a car, but at the same time there are new and abandoned cars that nobody needs? Yes, it really is so. And every year there are more and more of these new, unsold cars. The crisis of overproduction leads to the appearance of graveyards for cars, which can't find their buyers. In other words, more cars are produced than people actually need. But instead of somehow reducing the amount of cars produced, or at least reducing its cost to make cars cheaper for customers, many factories are just increasing increasing production. So new car graveyards appear all over the world. Thousands of cars are parked on runways, abandoned air bases, and old docks. It is absurd. Car manufacturers have to buy more and more land just to park their goods. It's believed that the decline in demand will never stop. Of course, companies don't want to talk about this strange problem, but new cars keep on arriving at car graveyards. The paradox is that car companies can't lower the price and sell these new cars, as they won't be able to sell the cars that have just left the factory at the same price. Is that logical? Of course. Yeah. In addition, the cost of each car sold often already includes the cost of the graveyard for their unsold siblings. Sounds a little creepy, but also companies can't just stop production, as they would have to close the factories and lay off tens of thousands of workers. In addition, factory closures would be a disaster for the steel industry and for thousands of people working in the auto industry. Overall, everyone would suffer, and no one knows how to solve this problem yet. Bikes if you look at the bicycle cemeteries in China from the air, they look like a mosaic of a famous designer or an unusual image. However, if you zoom in a little closer, you can distinguish hundreds and thousands of abandoned bicycles. But how did this happen? Is there such a hatred for bicycles in China that many residents have simply abandoned this ecological transport at the mercy of destiny? In fact, the truth is a little different. The idea of developing cycling in major Chinese cities seemed very promising, especially in the environmental sense. Dozens of new companies have emerged that flood the streets of Chinese cities with bicycles, but the urban infrastructure structure turned out to be very unprepared. The fact is that renting a bicycle in China is very simple. Just download the application to your mobile phone and pay a small amount of money to unlock the bicycle. After a trip, the user uses the same application to lock the bike. Some cities have special parking lots for rented bicycles, but as a general rule, people usually leave rented bikes just anywhere. Literally anywhere. In cities like Beijing or Shanghai, this has led to some already crowded streets literally ending up blocked by entire barricades of abandoned bicycles. To deal with the situation, the police are forced to confiscate the bicycles and take them to a dump in the countryside. Companies even hire employees to pick up the abandoned bicycles, but they just don't have enough time because there are way too many two-wheeled vehicles. Neon Signs it's quite hard to believe, but old neon signs also have their own cemetery. It is, of course, in Las Vegas, the place most associated with neon. The Neon Museum in Las Vegas is designed to inspire artists, students, historians, and designers, and inspiration flows, not only because of the city's history. This is the only museum in the world that collects, stores, studies, and displays neon signs and advertisements. And getting here isn't easy. The Neon Museum in Las Vegas is closed to the public, and you can see the neon sign collection only by ordering a tour and receiving a special invitation. But don't think that the colourful signs which once shone with lights are now sadly covered in rust and dust in the middle of the desert. If possible, they are restored and preserved in a decent way, so that they can tell and show something to new generations. Red Phone Boxes 
What UK symbols do you know? The Big Ben, the Double Decker buses, the flag, the Queen, I guess, and the red phone boxes, of course. Unfortunately, today, in the era of smartphones and other devices, the kiosks have become a simple tourist attraction. After all, when you have a phone in your pocket, you don't need to find the nearest red box to call someone, do you? Maintaining these phone boxes is unprofitable, and many end up in graveyards. For example, a large portion of these boxes rest in the small town of Carlton Miniot in North Yorkshire. It's sad to see how these luminous cabins gradually turn to dust under the influence of time. However, some are restored, although this is not an easy task. Although many telephone boxes have been built to a very high standard, after 80 years of service, only 75% of the boxes that enter the graveyard have the opportunity to return to the streets. By the way, after repair, they don't always turn into phone boxes again. Sometimes in the famous red boxes, defibrillators are installed, or small street cafeterias, flower shops, libraries, and even smartphone repair shops are organized. Motorcycles for nearly 50 years, a motorcycle enthusiast named Walter Cole of the small town of Lockport in upstate New York dedicated himself to the purchase and sale of replacement parts for older motorcycles. He purchased bicycles, engines, frames, mufflers, wheels, and other motorcycle-related items nationwide. Having aged, Cole sold his business to another motorcycle enthusiast named Frank. He continued the business, but in 2010, the building where all these items were stored began to deteriorate and collapse. Frank had no money for repairs, and after an old part of the roof did collapse, city authorities banned access to the facility. They soon decided to confiscate the building, along with its entire contents, for non-payment of property tax. Frank then won the lawsuit and was given a month to move the goods, but couldn't get rid of all of the spare parts and was forced to abandon them. No one wanted the abandoned building to continue collapsing, though. The water came out through the holes in the roof, which began to rot the roofs between the floors. It was very dangerous to visit the motorcycle graveyard. At some point, part of the second floor, along with the bicycles, collapsed and blocked the hallway, burying all the remaining parts. Presidents or rather, presidential busts. In Virginia, USA, in a remote camp, there's a strange cemetery with 43 gigantic busts of American presidents. All the giant busts are in a very bad condition, though, with large cracks and splinters, and it's not clear how they ended up here. But if you think this is a mystery story, we have to disappoint you. The presidential busts were ordained in 2004 to a Houston artist for installation in the main alley of President's Park. This open-air museum occupied 10 acres and was only open for six years. Because of their poor attendance, most of the busts were dismantled and moved to a private farm, where they live their lives in oblivion, covered in weeds and garbage. It is worth saying that each stone president weighs over 10,000 pounds and is 20 feet tall. These sad sculptures look a lot like the gigantic and mysterious statues on Easter Island, and who knows, perhaps some archaeologists of the future, having found presidents in the middle of the field, will also wonder how and why they ended up there. Taxis what fate awaits a taxi that has already worked enough? Or, for example, after an accident? Or if a service company suddenly goes bankrupt? Well, damaged and unwanted cars are sent to the taxi graveyard. For example, here's one in northeast Moscow, recorded from a drone. Hundreds of abandoned yellow cars that once wandered the streets remain parked outdoors and are slowly covering in rust. Sometimes, however, cars in accidents are dismantled for spare parts, which are then installed in newer cars ships. On the west coast of Staten Island, just 20 kilometers from Manhattan skyscrapers, is one of the most unusual ship cemeteries in the United States. Since the Great Depression, the Witter Marine Equipment Company has been here in the Rossville area. Witter specialized in several maritime operations, such as towing barges, draining, and selling spare parts. In addition, the company actively purchased dismantled ships for rebuilding, having up to 400. However, today, only about 100 ships are parked near the shore, and some of them are historic. This place is even called the Museum of Marine Catastrophes. It's not easy to get here, but the visitors just keep on coming. For example, marine historians explore the area by boat or kayak, and the terrifying, sad appearance of rusty boats is very popular with photographers and artists. Trains 
The Steam Locomotive Cemetery is the name of this railway alley, where many old trains and steam locomotives ended up. In the 1970s, worn and sometimes even outdated railway equipment was sent to the Shumkovo station area in the Perm Kraj in Russia. Initially, it was supposed to be a strategic reserve in case of war or unforeseen circumstances. For example, in the absence of electricity, it could be put into operation and used quickly. That's why for many decades, railway trains were carefully monitored, keeping them not only in good condition, but also protecting them from curious eyes and prowlers. However, being outdoors, the equipment gradually rusted and became unusable. Parts of the trains were decommissioned and delivered as scrap metal. Another part was purchased by museums and for the creation of historical monuments. Today, of the initial 140 locomotives, 15 remain. They are located in a row very close to each other. They are mainly equipment from the 1940s and 50s. And by the way, there are also old carriages too. But even in the event of any unforeseen situation, it's unlikely that anyone will use these abandoned trains. It's simply not profitable, and the condition of the locomotives is so bad that they'll probably never leave this place. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great. 